Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Sweden, the home of ABBA, IKEA, meatballs and famous chefs and seemingly also the home of watches. I've looked at a bunch of Swedish watches on the channel so far and today I've got another one to show you in the form of the Bravour Scandinavia. I start with a question for you lot then. Have I missed something? Is there a great tradition of Swedish watchmaking that has entirely passed me by? Or has the entire nation been invigorated by the undoubted success of Daniel Wellington and they've all decided that they want a little bit of that pie for themselves? Please enlighten me with your comments below. Now, I've looked at several Swedish watches in the past and I've been offered a whole bunch more, but usually I say no because usually they're minimalist quartz Chinese made rubbish, but with a Swedish mother country. Today though, I'm going straight to the top of the pile with this Bravour Scandinavia. Not only is it made in Sweden from Swedish steel, but it features a proper Salita Swiss made automatic movement and it's an SW300, not just a 200. So a big thank you to Bravour for sending me this one in for review. I believe they also sent one to Bruce Williams. So if you like the look, please check out his review as well. Don't just take my word for it. Be as informed a consumer as it is possible to be. All right, while we're thinking about this Swedish horological conundrum, let's flip the camera and have a look at this bravoure. So definitely not a Chinese made Rolex Submariner homage today. I think this one is about as far away from that on the spectrum as it is possible to get. Very nicely designed, some lovely little touches with this one. Kind of smart, casual, uh, dressy piece. I think you're gonna enjoy it, I know I have. So nicely packaged, Scandinavia, bravoure, and an individual number. So individual serial number, handwritten onto the side of the packaging. Bravoure are two Scandinavian gentlemen, Johan and Magnus. I'll pop a picture of them up on the screen there, looking decidedly stylish in their Scandinavian attire. They started the company in 2011. So they've been making watches for eight years now and they have six watches in the range. Three quartz and three autos. Let's be clear, this is not a dollar dazzler today. This Scandinavia model retails at 999 US dollars, but they're made to order. So you're definitely getting something a bit special. Packaging's nice. This is proper leather, no PU leather here today. We have a little polishing cloth and an instruction manual, which of course I have absolutely no intention of reading whatsoever and I think a gorgeous looking watch. Now they supplied me with this uh, chestnut strap, I think gives a very contemporary Scandinavian design, you know that kind of pale reminds me of the unfinished wood surfaces that are so popular in Scandinavia. They've also given me a more conservative black strap, so I will show it on both for you, give you a couple of different looks with this one. So I'll start with dimensions and specifications. Uh, no loom, so no loom video today, but I will get this one on the time grapher. SW300 Salita, as discussed. First encounter with one of these, so I'm keen to see how it performs in multiple different positions. Wrist shots, high, low, inside and out. Get a good look at what I think is a very stylishly designed little piece, this one. 39 mil in diameter, so we've got a fairly compact set of dimensions, 39 mil in diameter. 44 lug tip to lug tip, so it wears well even on smaller wrists. 10 mil thick. I think this is the thinnest automatic watch that I've reviewed on the channel to date. And that's 10 mil in spite of a piece of big domed sapphire crystal. 20 mil lug width and on the supplied vegetable tanned leather strap, this one weighs in at about 62 grams. So a very nice light casual watch. Certainly slips under a cuff. That's the whole idea of this one. Bravura say that themselves on their website. So 316L stainless steel. However, this is Swedish 316L stainless steel, which has a great reputation. Three piece case, mixture of different finishes. We've got a high polish to the top case, kind of satinized brushing on the mid case. And we've got a, a checkered pattern on the case pack. I'll show you that in just a moment. Dome sapphire crystal as mentioned, and there is AR coating on the underside. Now I'll get a zoom in in just a second but the dial itself is domed, which helps to add some depth. And it also helps to keep this watch down to that 10 millimeters thickness. 
zoomed in then and it's a really clean and uncluttered dial design. Printed in a ring with the Bravura logo automatic and one of their catchphrases there, the Swedish soul, Swiss heart. Again, reminding people that this one is assembled in Sweden with 316L Swedish steel, but containing a Swiss movement. The indices are applied, very simple gold batons. Hands are also skeletonized and in gold. Uh, needle second hand and nicely proportioned hour and minute hand. There's a minute track on the inner ring there that's printed and you can just about make out, I'm sure, little five minute increments. Date frame incorporated down there at the six o'clock. Again, with just a nice little gilded ring around that. Stylishly integrated. The whole thing very understated, but it looks great. Now let's see if I can show you the angle there. Yep, you can clearly see that not only is the sapphire domed, but the dial itself is domed. Now that is not cheap to do. My beloved Aura 65 replicates the look, but they managed to do it using a flat dial. So they're kind of cheating Aurus, whereas Bravura have gone the whole hog here and they've actually made a domed dial. Very nice indeed. Case back is also made of solitar. That's the wording there. Solitar is the Swedish seal that they use. Screw in 0081, so that's the individual serial number of this watch. And once again, Swedish soul, Swiss heart. Kind of geometric pattern here, a bit of texture, a bit of depth to that also. Now I've made this point before, if you see those words, vegetable tanned leather on a strap, you know that you're onto a good thing. I've looked at maybe half a dozen now and they have all smelled fantastic and been really nice, high quality. Quick release spring bars, very soft and comfortable, great quality stitching. Now, no bravura branding, which suggests that they picked this one off a shelf, but it was a rather nice shelf. Great quality strap, nice kind of cross stitching there also. And it is a deployant, so they've got a deployant with the bravura logo, and once again, the little buzzword, Swedish soul, Swiss heart on the underside, a nice touch. So let's get it on the time grapher then. Salita SW300-1. So this is the next rung up uh, from the 200, meant to rival the ETA 2892. 25 jewels, hacks, hand winds, obviously all that good stuff. 42 hour power reserve. Now Salita state, plus or minus five seconds per day across multiple positions, average with a maximum variance of plus or minus 20. So let's see how this one gets on. 51 degree lift angle, uh, automatic beat rate detector, beat error of zero, a healthy amplitude, and indeed this one coming in at minus five seconds per day when it's flat on its back. So certainly within the parameters that Salita suggest. That's crown down coming in at minus four seconds per day variance. And another position once again coming in within that minus five seconds per day. So this looks like a sweet little movement, the 300. Looks sweet on wrist as well, doesn't it? When this one came in with those two straps, I went straight for this chestnut strap. If you're gonna have a piece of Scandinavian design on your wrist, then I think this kind of pale dial, pale strap, those lovely little gold highlights, the indices in the hands, just a really, really nice color combination. I've got a seven inch wrist and I think this 39 mil diameter is just about spot on for this. Yeah, slightly sporty, casual, slightly dressy style of watch. It's an everyday watch for sure. 50 meters of water resistance, but obviously you're not gonna be getting it all that wet all that often on one of these gorgeous vegetable tanned leather straps. And I think this one looks great when you take it outside as well. Still pretty legible thanks to the AR coating on the underside of the dial and there's enough visual interest. So it's kind of minimalist Bauhaus almost in its design, but there's enough interest with those gold indices kind of glinting away there. Now, 44 mil lug tip to lug tip means it's gonna wear really, really nicely, even if you've got smaller wrists. So gentlemen, if you're buying this one for yourself, I think your lady friends might be tempted to steal it from you occasionally also. So do bear that in mind. If the chestnut strap is just too pale for you, if you want something a little more austere, that is also gonna be a little more hard wearing long term, then a slightly more conservative black strapped option might suit you for Monday to Friday at the office. Moans and niggles. Clearly I'm a fan of this bravura. I think it looks great. And I think once you start adding the vegetable strap, the domed dial, the Salita 300, the Swedish steel, the Swedish assembly, 
it's not that big a stretch to see where the 999 US dollar price tag comes from. I think it's a stylish, well thought out watch and I could see myself settling into a long-term relationship with one of these if I was a suitably stylish person, of course. What do I not like though? What am I gonna complain about? Well, it's not one for big guys today. I've got seven inch wrist, which is pretty much bang on average and I've only got a hole or two to play with here. I guess, you're not gonna go for a 39 mil watch if you've got an eight, eight and a half inch wrist anyway. It might look a little bit disproportionate, but you're not gonna be able to on the standard strap anyway. And deployance, personal choice, but I'm not a big fan of these things. Give me a buckle and tie any day of the week. I always find them to be a bit more trouble than they're worth. Now, as much as I can see where the money goes with the bravoure, once you start pushing up towards a grand, you've got some serious competition in the form of Nomos and in the form of Youngins with their Max Bill. Easy to see why the Max Bill would also be on your shopping list if you were looking for a stylish, minimalist North European casual timepiece. Now, the Youngins is more expensive and it uses a lesser quality ETA 2824 movement rather than the 2892 rival in the Bravour, but it is the more established brand and you're getting that made in Germany on the dial rather than Swedish Soul Swiss Heart. So I guess it's up to you if you can see the appeal in this one. If you like the story, if you like the Swedish steel, if you like that idea that it's half Swedish, half Swiss, I think they've done a quality job on this Bravour and I wish them well rising to the top of the Swedish horological pyramid. So there you have it, a really cute little watch in the form of this Bravour Scandinavia. Thousand dollars is not cheap, but once you start adding up the separate components, it's an SW300, not just an SW200. Swedish steel, which I'm sure is more expensive to buy than your standard surgical grade 316L. Lovely piece of dome sapphire, and it's got one of those vegetable tanned leather straps, which you know I love the look and the smell and the feel of. So Sweden may indeed be a new hotbed of horological interest in the years to come. I wish Bravour all the best in rising to the top of that ever increasing pile. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.